Welcome back. We were discussing in the last session the different types of viruses and we have seen that viruses can be classified into DNA primarily into DNA virus, RNA virus and retrovirus. DNA virus, the DNA is the genetic material that is injected uh, that goes into the nucleus ultimately and then either it could be integrated or it could be remain as uh, separate entities, but then it utilizes the viral this host machinery that means all the DNA polymerase and the um, your RNA polymerase that can be that is utilized to make the mRNA corresponding to the virus and then the mRNA synthesizes the proteins the virus particle is generated and comes up from the cell. In the case of RNA virus there are two types we ended up by saying that RNA virus the life cycle depends on whether it is a negative sense RNA uh, virus or a positive sense RNA virus. What is a negative sense RNA virus that means the mRNA has the sequence which is complementary to the actual mRNA that is required. You have to understand this negative sense negative uh, negative strand RNA virus that means the RNA has the sequence which is basically the sequence of the negative strand of the corresponding DNA if you think of the DNA although it does not have the DNA the negative strand mRNA means it is not the correct sequence. Now, you have to when you copy this you you have the complementary bases that are taken up. So, from negative strand mRNA if there is a RNA polymerase then whatever you get like this is the your genetic material and now you the genetic material is suppose this, but if it is negative strand then when you copy this when you copy this what you will get is the actual mRNA positive strand means the actual one the sequence matches with the RNA that is required to synthesize the proteins. Okay. So, now that means in RNA virus if it is a negative strand RNA virus. So, basically you do not have to go to the DNA you directly copy it to the mRNA which containing the correct sequence and that mRNA makes whatever proteins are required and then that is packaged and finally, that comes off that is the negative strand RNA virus. But if you have a positive strand RNA virus then the then the job is little bit more na? you have a positive strand RNA virus. So, first make a negative strand of that negative strand of that and then negative strand is copied back. Okay. So, you get the actual mRNA, okay. but here this this does not go it is not required that this virus needs to go to the nucleus, because it is not the DNA is not involved any anywhere okay, in the RNA virus. So, it takes place in the cytosol that means outside the nucleus, but within that uh, within the contents of the cell or the contour of the cell. Okay. So, that is what is RNA virus and now, so there are two types plus and minus strand. One uh, scientist a biologist famous biologist David Baltimore and he first proposed this classification. Baltimore's classification I am not showing it, but you can get it from, uh, from anywhere in the textbook or in the internet. He actually classified into 8 types but these 8 types are basically I told you the DNA could be double strand could be single strand. So, there are one classification there then the RNA could be single strand double strand then the RNA could be negative sense RNA strand positive sense RNA strand okay. and then you have retrovirus we have not discussed the retrovirus. So, you see you can get 8 classifications that is the famous classification by David Baltimore a Nobel uh, winning uh, scientist uh, biologist. Okay. Now, let us come back to the uh, come to the retrovirus I think I think I can if it is not there I can uh, tell you what is actually happening in retrovirus. In retrovirus now again you have this RNA as the genetic material, but so RNA as the genetic material. Now, as it enters the uh, enters the cell again like the DNA virus 
this RNA is injected inside the nucleus okay. and then this RNA gets uh, this RNA sorry this RNA is I am sorry the RNA is copied into the DNA first that is the reversal of the transcription process. What is transcription DNA goes to the RNA means DNA uh, is transcribed to the RNA, but this is a process where RNA is, is copied back into the DNA. Okay. So, this is the DNA the viral DNA. Okay. Now, there must be some enzyme we do not have this machinery our system runs from DNA to RNA to protein. Okay. So, we have transcriptase means the polymerase natural the normal polymerase, but this is a reverse of transcription. So, this enzyme is called reverse transcriptase reverse transcriptase. Okay. So, this DNA is now entering into the nucleus and then it will be integrated into the host DNA. So, there is a question of integration here. So, if this is the host DNA, so now you have the viral, so you have the viral DNA. Okay. So, what happens again just repeat the what is the difference between retrovirus and RNA virus? RNA virus enters and it has its own machinery, okay. it does not need to go to the nucleus directly it is copied the RNA to the mRNA. Okay. And, but for retrovirus the RNA has to be copied into the DNA, the DNA then goes into the nucleus and then integrates with the host DNA and this then is utilized for the in for information flow. So, when the information flows from this part you will get mRNA of the virus. Okay mRNA of the virus that is what you need what the virus needs to replicate is to have the mRNA and once the mRNA is formed the new protein particles are uh, will be will be made and with the proteins which are required for the virus replication. So, the virus particle will be formed and then it will come out of the cell and finally, infect another cell. Okay. So, that is how the infection goes. So, now we know how to uh, what are the different types. Now, the question is how to um, treat a patient who is suffering from viral infection. One thing is that vaccination usually originally what happened for viral infection people realized that many of the viral infections are cured uh, by taking rest for one week. If you take any medicine you will be cured within 7 days and if you do not take medicines it will take one week to be to get cured that means it is same without medicine with medicine it does not matter. So, basically what ultimately uh, makes me cured if I am suffering from a viral infection usually it is a cold some flu type symptoms I have and basically what happens that immune response the immunity in the body that ultimately takes care and uh, takes care of the vi this virus particles whatever is in my body and then ultimately destroys them. So, basically it is the immune immunity that is very important. Now, the problem is if a person has less immunity then what will happen? Then you have to provide him then vaccination see vaccination is something which is basically uh, boost up the immune function means if you have a virus and if you take a, a dead virus of that inject it. So, what will happen you are some proteins will be some antibodies will be generated antibodies are proteins and that will be there the memory. Uh, the which has a memory. So, whenever the next uh, next virus particle enters, so it immediately knows that this is the type of uh, virus particle and then immediately you can uh, uh, the body will take the uh, will make these antibodies and destroy okay, destroy the virus particle. So, vaccination is the is the general route for uh, for protecting against the viral infection and there are different vaccines which are very successful 
polio vaccine, measles, mumps, MMR as this MMR vaccine is a very standard uh, which is given to the uh, to the babies and then however, not all viral infections uh, you cannot uh, that there are vaccines. The, the vaccines are basically discovered by way back about I think 300 or about 300 years ago by Edward Jenner. He developed the vaccine for the pox for the for the smallpox vaccine. At that time nothing is known, huh? nothing was known science uh, only physics and mathematics uh, came into force. Chemistry started by discovery by Lavoisier and uh, other people of the different gases oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen. So, nothing was known, but Jenner just by sheer observation what he observed that the milk the milkmaid means who actually uh, trades with the milk okay they are de generally suffer the milkmaid who had contracted the less virulent cowpox uh, they actually have some type of pox but that is not uh, that is not fatal okay so they have some blisters in their in their hands and that what Jenner noticed and they and later on they were never they never had any smallpox. So, those persons who are milkmaid, so that means this is what is called cowpox. They are handling the cow and they get a pox which gives blister, but that is not life threatening, okay. but that protects the person from getting smallpox, which is life threatening for the humans. Okay. So, what he did? He took the whatever contents inside that blister and then injected into the other people and that is the start of the vaccination. Yeah. However, as I told you vaccine vaccination works as you told that you have to either dead virus you can take or a part of the virus particle you can take. So, that anti uh, antibodies can be generated, but the problem is some of these uh, viruses like HIV the which causes the AIDS uh, epidemic and then the flu virus some of the flu viruses are very dangerous birds uh, bird flu or uh, then Nipah virus there are different types of viruses are there uh, swine flu. So, for them is very difficult to have a uh, have a vaccination because the because of two reasons first reason is very important that is the virus changes its character there is mutation. So, if you want to uh, if you want to see that the okay today the virus looks like this and then you generate a vaccine and the next day you see the virus has changed the surface has uh, has a different characteristics. Okay. So, that vaccination would not work. So, that is the mutation problem. So, you have to have the reason I am saying all this that to stress the to stress the fact that we need antiviral drugs. Okay. Now, the question is how do we now get the antiviral drugs. I told you it took a long time to come up because people thought that antiviral drugs will be very difficult because it is utilizing the host machinery, okay. but still there are certain differences. Uh, what are the differences? If you take suppose a DNA virus, okay. now DNA virus what happens? See I have normal cells and I have say virus infected cells. Suppose this is virus infected. The virus infected cells that means the virus will generate uh, what will inject its DNA into the nucleus. If it is a DNA virus, what is the DNA virus? Like the blisters that we get in the uh, in the lips, which is caused by a virus called simplex herpes virus. Okay, so that is the DNA virus. Now what happens sometimes they may be little bit a little painful and also uh, cause lot of uncomfortable uh, bring in uncomfortable you do not feel comfortable having this simplex herpes virus. They also can infect the eye so that is herpes infection in the eye. So, you need uh, to treat this herpes infection is DNA virus infection. Now, what happens here the DNA is injected into the into the nucleus and then the DNA uh, 
the DNA there are two ways I told you it could be integrated into the it, it, it could be the integrated into the uh, into the DNA or it could just remain there and then it will utilize the uh, host machinery the polymerase and then make the mRNA. Okay. Now, how the, the polymerase works? The polymerase works by again coming back to that uh, just going back uh, to the biochemistry that it, the polymerase works by attack of the 3 prime OH into the to a 5 prime triphosphate eh? 5 prime triphosphate and then form the phosphodiester bond. So, this phosphate is attacked you kick out a diphosphate. So, that is the reaction we are talking about. Okay. So, now the DNA that is suppose we talk about the DNA which is not integrated which is which is like this okay, which uh, is released, but not integrated with the DNA. Now, what will happen this DNA has to be has to be copied okay. and if you want to do that suppose I take a compound which is uh, there is a drug called acyclovir acyclovir I see acyclovir actually that is the pronunciation. Now, what happens the acyclovir you know that the one of the component of the increase of the polymerization reaction is the attack of the is the triphosphate is the is the nucleoside triphosphate that is one of the component. Okay. So, what you have done suppose you take a nucleoside which suppose does not have the 3 prime OH. Okay, the base is there and uh, you are giving it in the form of OH and you have a group here X which is not which is not able to attack the phosphate here to make the phosphodiester bond. Okay. If that be the case then what will happen if this is of course, this is not given as the triphosphate it is given as the only the alcohol that means only the nucleoside, but to participate in this polymerization reaction this has to be transformed into the triphosphate. Okay. So, what I have said that suppose I want to stop this uh, stop this process that means, DNA going to the mRNA of the virus. So, what I uh, what I need to do I need to add uh, during this transcription process I need to add a nucleoside, but not the triphosphate again I repeat a nucleoside which lacks the 3 prime OH. That means, the 3 prime OH cannot any further cannot uh, continue that reaction the phosphodiester bond formation. Okay. Now, the first drug that was made on this principle is this acyclovir. So, acyclovir you can if, even if I write now you see O and then you have a base. I am just not writing the adenin, adenine, uh, this is guanine. Okay. So, the I am not I just write I wrote the B. Now, what will happen this is basically a truncated version sorry a truncated version of the sugar, but you do not have this part, but it is a truncated version of the sugar. Now, what happens interestingly this is also taken up for uh, as a as a kind of nucleotide triphosphate uh, nucleoside triphosphate for lengthening the chain. Okay. But the what happens if this is taken up by the polymerase then the next reaction the polymerase basically have if this taken up as a base then what will happen the sugar that is here that lacks the 3 prime OH lacks the 3 prime OH. Okay. So, if it lacks the 3 prime OH it the, the, the chain cannot grow any further. Okay. So, chain will be will be stopped the question is why this will be taken as a uh, or how this is taken as a substrate for the polymerization 
when it is not present in the triphosphate form. Okay. You have given it only in the alcohol form, free alcohol. So, in order to have this taken up by the polymerase enzyme, recognize it, it has to be transformed into a triphosphate. Okay. Now, here is the interesting part. You have two cells, one cell is virus infected, another is the normal cell, no virus. Okay. Now, this acyclovir molecule enters both the cells. Okay. Now, the virus has a now the phosph it has to be converted into a triphosphate, the triphosphate is written here, but the triphosphate takes place in two in stages. Okay. What are the stages? First it will undergo monophosphorylation and then it will undergo diphosphorylation finally, triphosphate then that will be taken up as the substrate. Okay. Interestingly the first phosphorylation is done by a viral kinase a viral kinase. Okay. We do not have any means we do not our body does not have any kinase, kinases are basically uh, they make the phosphate, they does the phosphorylation, they do the phosphorylation. So, this um, but viral kinase we do not have any corresponding kinase to do the monophosphorylation of this. Okay. So, once this is monophosphorylated then the host the host kinase takes up the further phosphorylation. So, it makes the diphosphate then the triphosphate. So, what happens when this molecule enters the two cells one is infected another is uninfected. So, the infected cell there is viral kinase present. So, that will be converted into the monophosphate and if it is converted to monophosphate then only the host cell machinery converts it to the triphosphate. And if it is converted to triphosphate, it is taken up as a substrate by the RNA polymerase. If it is taken up as a substrate, then what happens as it is incorporated into the chain, the chain stops from further elongation. So, the mRNA will be truncated, it will be a truncated mRNA. So, it will not be a proper mRNA. Now, there are uh, there are two mechanisms by which this acyclovir can work. One is that it uh, makes the triphosphate via this process the viral kinase followed by the the host kinase, but it uh, either it acts as a competitive it acts as an inhibitor it goes and binds to the RNA polymerase stays there or it can react to form the uh, to form the phosphodiester, but after that the RNA cannot grow any further. So, there are two ways it can it can stop the RNA polymerase one is acting as an inhibitor goes binds to the active site and the other is it is actually incorporated into the growing chain, but once it is incorporated the chain growth stops. Okay. So, basically virus cannot make the mRNA. So, that is the first landmark discovery that an antiviral antivirus drug was discovered. Okay. So, that means you can if you have very good biological knowledge about the virus the life cycle you can make uh, compounds which are antiviral compounds. Uh, basically you have to identify the processes which are different from the host. Now, problem with acyclovir is that it is not very uh, it is uh, it has got some bioavailability issue. Okay. It is not absorbed properly from the from the gastrointestinal tract. So, um, see it has to be absorbed and then it goes into the blood stream and then and then attack the attack the cells which are virus infected. So, to in to have that absorption better what people have done they have put a an ester which is, which is an ester of valine. Okay. Now, valine has a recognition valine is a is a natural means protein amino acid. So, there are receptors to hold the valine part. So, in the GI tract the valine is recognized. So, that goes that is recognized taken up and the absorption is better okay. and then that goes into the bloodstream. So, these are these are nothing but pro drugs see all are pro drugs. If I say what is a cyclovir that is a pro drug because it has to be converted into the triphosphate before it actually stops the RNA polymerase. Okay. So, it is a pro drug all are pro drug this is uh, this is 
basically another step ahead of the uh, before the prodrug because you have to cleave the valine ester bond and then you have to make it triphosphate. Okay. So, that is the DNA virus. Similarly, now uh, people have uh, people have uh, developed compounds which are anti HIV drugs. What is HIV? HIV is a retrovirus, HIV is a retrovirus. Okay. So, in retrovirus again I remind you in retrovirus what happens that you have to integrate the DNA which is obtained by reverse transcriptase process from a from RNA to DNA and this DNA gets integrated into the host. So, uh, here that is what is retrovirus ok. Then the it as it is integrated to the host DNA. So, the host DNA will copy to the mRNA. Here one new enzyme that is there that is called reverse transcriptase ok. What is reverse transcriptase? Reverse transcriptase is is making of the DNA from the RNA. Na? RNA is the genetic material goes to the DNA and that is what is done by the RT reverse transcriptase. But this is nothing but making of DNA means what it is a polymerase. It is a polymerase, but it is an RNA dependent DNA polymerase because the template is RNA and you are making a DNA. Yeah, you have to be careful about naming all these. If I say RNA dependent DNA polymerase, that means I am making a DNA utilizing an RNA template. So, that is a reverse transcriptase and what is a transcriptase? It is it is a, a DNA as a template, but you are making an RNA. So, that means it is a RNA polymerase. Okay, I think it is clear. Now, this reverse transcriptase is because it is a polymerase again. Polymerase means you have to make this phosphate that phosphodiester bond. So, what people found that the same strategy worked for HIV. The first drug that was made was called zidovudine or it is popularly known as AZT azidothymidine. Okay. What it has? It has got a thymine, thymidine here, a thymine sorry thymine base and it has got it lacks the 3 prime OH, but it has got an azide and it has got the OH. But the basic principle is same that if it is taken up as a substrate chain elongation will not take place. Now, the question is how does it what is how does the triphosphorylation works like in the earlier acyclovir it is the viral infected uh, viral infected cells the monophosphorylation done and then the diphosphate and the triphosphate that is formed by the, the by the host kinase. In case of AZT contrary to the earlier case here if you have two cells suppose HIV infected and HIV non infected okay. this AZT enters. Here the entire phosphorylation is done by the host kinase. Okay. So, apparently it seems that why it will be very specific because if the triphosphorylation is done by the by the host kinase. So, if this AZT will be converted into the triphosphate in the normal cell as well as in the HIV infected cell. But fortunately this reverse transcriptase this triphosphate what is made out of ATP AZT has got much higher affinity for the reverse transcriptase than towards the, the other polymerase enzymes that are present in the host. I hope this is clear. Here first of all there is the difference in mechanism, here the phosphorylation is done by the host kinase. Okay. So, phosphorylation will be done in both the cells infected non infected, but the triphosphate that is made up from the ACV uh, sorry the AZT has is recognized by reverse transcriptase much more than the the transcriptase or other polymerase enzymes that are present in the uh, in the host. So, basically what will happen after the triphosphate formation it is the HIV infected cells that will be affected 
the AZT will work against the HIV infected cells and where the it is it is having the phosphorylation that will ultimately come out of the cell because it does not have any affinity means it has got affinity, but there is a uh, there is a huge difference between the activity of affinity for the reverse transcriptase uh, vis a vis the um, the polymerases that are present in the host. Okay. So, that is the mechanism of uh, EZT. On the same line, you have got different drugs that are first drug was EZT, then somebody put a sulfur here, then somebody removed the sulfur, nothing is there, only dideoxy, it is a dideoxy system okay, and a different base also, you can have different bases also. So, there are many permutation combinations you can get and there in fact, there are lot of reverse transcriptase inhibitors now available. Um, now available okay, for treating the HIV. You know AIDS is a, is a deadly disease, what it does? It destroys the immune system and ultimately the, the, the patient dies of very uh, opportunistic infections. Like some infections that we have, those are called opportunistic. Opportunistic means they are all waiting to invade the body, but because of the immunity, they cannot do that. So, when the immunity goes down, this opportunistic microorganisms go inside and then ultimately, because immunity is not there, ultimately nothing works. So, the person dies of that. Okay. So, basically these are called like the your the hyenas, they are opportunistic animal. No? Hyenas never kill any other animal, it is the lions, lioness kills the animal and then the hyenas come and then try to take over whatever remains are there, remove that kick out this lioness because they have large numbers and then the lioness leaves and leaving the uh, leaving that dead animal and then they eat that dead animal. So, they are opportunistic animal. So, you have similar opportunistic uh, infections also. So, this is one way reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Now, reverse transcriptase uh, inhibition can be reverse transcriptase. See, reverse transcriptase is an enzyme, it must be having some active site where this, this dideoxy or the azidothymidine triphosphate is binding okay. and then the polymerase uh, works. So, basically the AZT triphosphate, huh? triphosphate has to bind in the active site, then that will be incorporated into the growing chain. Now, there are there is a process which is called allosteric inhibition. If you remember, I told you allosteric inhibition is basically that the inhibitor binds to a different site binds to a different site, but when it binds to this site, this site is closed, the normal site that is what is called allosteric inhibition. So, basically it is a it is a non competitive because they are not going into the same active site, the normal active site is there and there is an allosteric site. So, there is a molecule which goes here, it does not bind here, but as it binds here this binding pocket is closed. So, that is also possible, you can have allosteric inhibition of reverse transcriptase and one example is shown here, let me see whether it the structure, no that is not the one, sorry, I think um, I will show, yes, nevirapin is a drug which is an allosteric inhibitor of reverse transcriptase. Look at the structure, it is it is also called a non nucleoside inhibitor, non nucleoside inhibitor, because earlier AZT and all these things are nucleoside base and sugar, but now you have a non nucleoside inhibitor that is the uh, nevirapine is one, maybe some more new ones have come up, okay. because the treatment of AIDS because the virus changes the characteristics, it mutates very rapidly. So, you have to target uh, target the virus by different techniques. 
if you give the same type of molecule like only a z t or other nucleoside it may not work in the long run. So, better you have a cocktail of drugs that one targets the active site of this reverse transcriptase another targets the allosteric site. And if there is another mechanism by which this reverse transcriptase can be inhibited then better better do that also add that into the cocktail. Now, yes there is there are again scope of uh, making new antiviral agents for HIV because remember HIV is a retrovirus. So, retrovirus what it does it has got a reverse transcriptase which is not present in the host and I told you that the retrovirus that RNA has to be copied into the DNA and the DNA has to be integrated into the host DNA. Okay. Who does the integration okay, that is also another process because your DNA is your host DNA is here. So, somewhere you have to insert your viral DNA. Okay. So, there must be some protein which is doing that chopping at some point putting the virus DNA here and then sealing it. Okay. So, that is what is called an enzyme called integrase. So, now you have a scope you can inhibit the integrase also that is possible. However, not much success is yet to be achieved by inhibiting the integrase, but it is a good target. But there is another target and that is how the virus is enters the host cell. How does the virus enter the host cell? I told you that there is a recognition point, there has to be a recognition on the cell surface and the virus particle. Okay. So, and this whatever the envelope that is made up of glycoprotein. Okay. Who makes that glycoprotein for the virus must be some enzyme that is present in the virus okay. and what was found was a protease enzyme which is very crucial for the virus to replicate to enter into the cell. Uh, because this HIV protease makes the glycoprotein see initially the mRNA the viral mRNA what is what comes out of the nucleus is very big because it has to make all the proteins. So, it makes the protein first it makes a big protein and then the protein needs to be chopped off into the actual actual functional components. Okay. This chopping the entire the big protein has to be chopped off that means, you have to need a protease to do that. So, the virus HIV protease is very crucial for the uh, for the virus to amplify to replicate because if you do not if you do not allow this chopping to chopping to be uh, to be done then the virus particle will not have the glycoprotein proper glycoprotein which allows it to anchor onto the surface of a cell. Okay. Protease enzyme which is very vital for the for this replication process of the virus to make the proper glycoprotein. Uh, so, people started studying what is the structure of this HIV protease and after the advent of this now the X-ray crystallographic and the cryo EM all these are available to know the structure very quickly of a protein. So, HIV protease structure was was solved and it was found that it is a dimer. Okay. It is actually basically two similar units forming a dimer and the active site is basically in the cavity that is um, that is there when the dimer is formed. So, basically there are you can dissect it into this. So, one in one part is subunit is here another subunit is here and you see there is an empty site here which is the active site and this is the flap region and through which the the molecule enters. Okay. Now, this is a I think I might have a better picture of HIV protease this is a crystal structure you see this is one part and this is the other part. So, it is basically a C 2 symmetric dimeric enzyme, enzyme which does cleavage of the peptide bond. Okay. Peptide bond 
Now, question is proteases we know are four different types. One is serine protease, cysteine protease, aspartyl protease, metalloprotease. So, first question is what type of protease is this? They found that this is an aspartyl protease. That means the aspartate, the aspartic acid and the aspartate, they are like this. Sorry, double bond O, this is not there, and OH. So, the water is is held up by the aspartate. Okay. The aspartate uh, removes the hydrogen, helps the water to remove the hydrogen from here and then thereby increasing the nucleophilicity of water. Okay. So, that attacks the carbonyl of the peptide. So, it is an aspartyl protease. Again, I just said aspartyl protease is basically one aspartic acid and one aspartate. So, first the aspartate takes up the hydrogen from the water. So, making OH minus virtual OH minus that goes to attack the carbonyl hydrolyzes the the kicks out the nitrogen and then uh, the OH minus and then it has to put back the hydrogen to the to the carbox to the aspart to the aspartic acid that is there. Okay. So, maybe I can uh, it takes a lot of time let us say. Uh, anyway, I think that has been covered earlier the aspartyl protease. Okay. So, two aspartic acid are there one is here another is there and then the peptide bond that is hydrolyzed is very interesting that the peptide bond is uh, on this side that means on the on the, on the uh, this is the C ter uh, this is the C terminal and this is the N terminal. So, now this is a proline and this is usually an aromatic ring a phenylalanine. What we know that like all the enzymes they do not like to work or they cannot cleave the peptide bond if there is a proline, but here this is an enzyme which likes to have a proline and cleaves the bond between proline between phenylalanine and proline. Okay. But that gives a very good handle because that means, if you can inhibit this protease human enzymes because they do not clip the peptide bond involving proline. So, they will not be affected much because they will be entirely different character even if we have a aspartyl protease, but that is not able to hydrolyze the peptide bond involving a proline. Okay. So, that is why you can expect selectivity if you can inhibit this HIV protease. So, HIV protease uh, one is the, it can hydrolyze many other sites, but one of the primary site is this that hydrolysis of between a phenylalanine and a proline of a glycoprotein. Okay. And based on the structure of this uh, the peptide this this is the, the the functional the protein the glycoprotein which is hydrolyzed. So, what they have done they have modeled uh, different compounds and made HIV uh, protease inhibitors. They started with a proline because the enzyme remember the enzyme is HIV protease which recognizes a proline and then hydrolyzes the amide bond. So, basically your compound should what you start with a proline and a phenylalanine. Now, let us see whether L phenyl L proline whether this is an inhibitor or you increase the size put different groups. So, by that way slowly the size of the peptide got increased and finally, what happened the you know that when the hydrolysis takes place it goes via a tetrahedral intermediate. This was the case na? if water comes then this goes out it is a tetrahedral carbon. So, you want to have a tetrahedral carbon at the site of the carbonyl but it cannot be a carbonyl because if it is a living it has got a living group then the, the attack will take place. So, what you have is uh, want is what is called a transition state analog. So, you have a carbon with a which the sp 3 carbon with which and then uh, the carbon. So, this is a what is called uh, peptido mimetic peptido mimetic it is not a peptide bond, but you are mimicking a peptide but this is this peptidomimetic is basically based on transition state analog. 
So, they have put proline and then they changed the proline finally, they found that a, tetra, a, a, a fully uh, hydrogenated isoquinoline is better than proline. Okay. So, we are not going into the details it must be a trial and error, but they started with proline and L phenylalanine and finally, the drug that is that has uh, that is now approved is called sequenavir. Sequenavir is a compound which is based the design is based on what design is based on the uh, that that peptide which it hydrolyzes there is a proline and there is a phenylalanine. So, it starts from there and slowly elaborated that only thing you have to remember that it has to use a transition state analog you cannot use a peptide bond. So, that crucial peptide bond you have to you have to replace by what is called a peptide mimetic. Okay. So, this is the first drug that was uh, the HIV uh, protease inhibitor then a success story from a Bengali scientist many people do not know this professor Arun Ghosh. Okay. He was a student of Narendrapur Ramakrishna Mission College in Calcutta, okay. studied chemistry, went to IIT Kanpur, then went to, went to Harvard did his PhD and then went to first to Illinois and then now he is in Purdue University. So, he started also trying to develop uh, HIV protease inhibition inhibitors. And again you see this was the carbon which is the peptido mimetic that means, the transition state analog and he had the phenylalanine already there, but instead of the proline you have a sulfonamide now. Actually this requires lot of in silico screening that different uh, molecules how, how do they score when you dock with the HIV protease. Okay. So, ultimately he came up with a molecule which is called Dadunavir. Uh, if I am correct, this is basically uh, let us see what is the configuration here of the phenylalanine 1, 2, and 3. So, that is S. Uh, because I what I know that this part comes from his name Arun. Okay. So, possibly there is some D configuration in the molecule that is Darunavir. So, he, he calls it Darunavir and it is now approved as a, a drug and so that is uh, the contribution of an Indian scientist uh, in developing an anti HIV agent. Okay. Just to uh, quickly, so this is the crystal structure how Darunavir is, uh, is interacting with the HIV protease. Uh, it is binding with See aspartate 25 and 25 prime. Here prime means one of the subunit and normal numbering is the other subunit. So, it binds with aspartate 25 and 25 prime that is the key key sites in the uh, which does the hydrolysis okay, which actually coordinates to the water molecule. And then in addition to that it has got other binding partners that is why it is so it works in nanomolar level. So, that is uh, I think so we have now uh, discussed about how to develop uh, antiviral drugs, uh, antiviral drugs uh, you can you can target certain aspects of the virus life cycle like you can target the uh, if it is a retrovirus reverse transcriptase if it is a DNA virus you can um, target the phosphorylation basically and uh, then you can inhibit the polymerase there you can target the HIV protease in case of HIV this is not for all other uh, virus, but for HIV this is HIV protease you can do and uh, this is important because the glycoproteins are have to be synthesized by the virus. Just the last one I think another strategy which was successful only in one case up till now is what is called antisense therapy anti sense therapy is basically that you have the if you have the what is anti sense anti sense means the the strand the negative strand uh, which is copied to the sense strand okay so 
when the virus replicates what it will do? It will make the same strand of the mRNA. Okay. Now, if you know the sequence of the mRNA, what you can do? You can make the complementary strand of that RNA and give it to the system. So, what will happen? Suppose, this is the same strand of the mRNA outside from outside you are giving I'm sorry you are giving the the complementary strand of the RNA. So, what will happen the RNA will now form a double stranded RNA or if I write it in linear fashion. So, if this is the same strand suppose this is the same strand and I make a part of anti sense part suppose this. So, this will go and block the mRNA form a double strand here like a primer. Okay. So, then what will happen the trans this trans uh, translation will be stopped this is what is called. So, that has to be anti sense then because you have to stop the same strand of mRNA from working. Okay. However, there was a problem in this strategy the problem was there is a, there are enzymes which are called nuclease enzymes ribonuclease. So, when you give some RNA from outside some RNA piece that will be immediately chopped up by the by the RNA the ribonuclease the nuclease enzymes. So, before it binds to the target sense RNA uh, this whole RNA will be hydrolyzed. So, that will be ineffective. So, that was the major problem. So, what people did very interestingly they took the normal see the sequence has to be the complementary. So, the normal basis have to be taken, but instead of phosphate what they did took the sorry this is a there is a O here this O. So, instead of phosphate they have a thio thiophosphate. Now, this is what is called also called phosphoro thioate. Thioate linkage. So, basically what you have done you have removed the oxygen put a sulfur uh, you can say sulfophosphate that is not a problem, uh, but in, in the literature it says phospho phosphorothioate some books have written phosphonothioate I think that is wrong because it was it was from a book. So, this is phosphorothioate and that is the nucleus cannot hydrolyze this phosphodiester bond. Okay. So, these are called antisense with stable phosphor phosphorothioate linkage that linkage has to be there because in order to bypass the action of the nucleus the ribonucleus which is going to hydrolyze all these things. So, all these linkages are basically all phosphorothioate and this is the drug. So, they have made this antisense drug for what cytomegalovirus there is a virus called cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus causes infection of the eye very serious conjunctivitis in the eye. So, the strategy is to make an antisense oligonucleotide with a stable phosphorothioate linkage and what happens when the when the virus wants to replicate makes the mRNA that mRNA is blocked by forming the double strand. So, that is the other strategy. So, there are basically vaccine is a strategy then you have this uh, reverse transcriptase inhibitor you have the DNA polymerase inhibitor you have the protease inhibitor and you have the antisense strategy. Besides there are other strategies I think for the for our purpose uh, knowing uh, more or less the general strategies and the different drugs that are present or that are used today um, to treat viral infection. So, which have come a we have come a long way from 80s if we think from 80s we have come a long way in developing many of these antiviral agents. Okay. Thank you.